So an essential part of the neurological examination is assessment of the gait. And this is normally done outside on a non-slip surface on a loose lead to allow the animal to be as relaxed as possible. Obviously, you're not going to take a cat outside, so you want them to roam free in the consulting room or even have a video of them moving naturally at home. You want to see the animal walk up and down. Again, don't have them tight on uh, to heel. You're looking for normal placement of feet. Try to get them to do some more complex activities, especially circling, because if they can't cross their feet normally, may knuckle over uh, or not be able to, um, to cross them and pivot instead, then that may suggest weakness or a neurological deficit. If they're not painful, then perhaps get them to do a more complex locomotor task like jumping up and jumping down. Uh, hesitancy or failure to do that uh, can indicate either weakness or pain. And again, assessing jumping ability is very important in cats. Uh, you may be able to do that in your consult room or with a video. The next part of our examination is assessing for spinal and neck pain. And uh, depending on where you think the pain is, you can either start cranially and work down, or sometimes you start at the, the bottom and work up. And it's important to be systematic. Um, I press the apaxial muscles on either side of the vertebral spinous processes, either standing to the side of the dog or just behind. I'm assessing the dog's behavioural reaction and their muscle tension. It's also important to manipulate the tail. Um, it can be particularly painful with lumbar sacral and uh, coccygeal intervertebral di discic um, disease and other painful tail disorders. Then gently flex and extend the neck. This is an assessment for head pain as well as neck pain. Careful not to yank on that neck too much. You know, neck pain is very um, painful and so you don't want to, to just um, over hurt the dog and you can see our operator here is doing this very gently. So the next part of the neurological examination is assessing proprioception uh, that is to say whether or not the animal uh, is aware of where its feet are in space both motion and position and the three most common tests that we use to assess that is the knuckled over paw, hopping and hemi walking. But of course, we also are assessing joint position when the animal is just normally walking around in our, in our gait examination. When you're doing a knuckled over paw, it's incredibly important to fully support the animal's weight. So difficult to do in large animals. If you don't fully support your, their weight, then the influence of them having to support themselves is also being assessed. And if the animal is very weak, then that's going to cause a delayed response. Likewise, using a, the paper pull test is very inaccurate because the um, the animal, again, if they're weak, they will be delayed. When we do hopping, we push the animal over um, while supported. And as soon as the joints are not aligned, so the shoulder is not aligned with the carpus and the hip is not aligned with the hock, then they should be able to hop. And failure to hop successfully can also be um, uh, a loss of muscular strength. In that case, the supporting limb will, will collapse rather than them being a delay. I find hemi walking extremely useful in cats um, uh, and it's a bit more difficult in dogs. So next we're going to look at the cranial nerves and I start with vision and work my way down. I do like to use a dropped cotton wool ball, although controversial, just because it allows me to compare each side and it's a good indication that the animal can see. Make sure it's something silent and uh, that is easily distinguished by a dog, which is you know, white. Menace response is assessing a lot. It requires intact vision, the facial nerve, the brain pathways and the cerebellum. And so you need to interpret it based on other tests as well. Make sure that you use a finger rather than a flapping hand because the flapping hand will generate uh, air currents which will stimulate the palpebral reflex. The papillary light reflexes assesses the optic nerve, the retina and the ocular motor nerve and the chiasm in between. Make sure you use a bright light. If the animal is very scared and you're using a dim light then the animal's fear will drive papillary dilatation despite that, um, that light and you won't see the reflex. And remember you don't need to see pinprick pupils especially 
especially if the animal is scared. You just need to see the reflex. The oculocephalic reflex assesses the ocular motor nerves, that's three, uh, four and six, and also the brain stem. And you're seeing the eyes remain central as you turn the head from side to side and up and down. Then we're assessing the palpebral reflex, slightly touch the medial and lateral canthus, that's sign sensation with the trigeminal and motor with the facial. Look at facial sensation all over the rest of the, the face by stimulating the lips and the nostril um, and uh, the external ear. Uh, contraction of the face uh, as a result is the facial nerve and you may see a tongue lick as well. And of course we can also assess jaw tone by opening the mouth. Uh, and uh, tongue movement by opening in the mouth and if we throw the dog a treat we can see its ability to pick up food and uh, um, swallow. So next we're going to assess the spinal reflexes which are used to uh, determine if a lesion is within a certain part of the spinal cord or if the animal has neuromuscular disease. You can either do it with the dog lying down if they're nice and relaxed or standing up can often be easier. We use the patella reflex, tapping the patella tendon to assess the femoral nerve, and then the withdrawal reflex, the gastrocnemius and the cranial tibialis to assess the sciatic nerve. When you're assessing the muscle tendon reflexes, it's uh, easiest to put your digit, a thumb or a finger, on the middle of the belly of the muscle and then tap that. When you do a withdrawal reflex, make sure that the animal flexes all of the joints and the reflex is flexion of all of the joints. Deep pain perception is when you're looking for a behavioral response from the animal and is something different. When you're doing it standing up, I use my knee shoved bet uh, between the animal's leg to help support the weight. Doing the fallen reflexes can sometimes be more uh, tricky. Sometimes you don't get much of a, um, a, a, a reflex. Um, we have the, tr uh, the triceps for the radial and the biceps for the muscular cutaneous. And again, the most uh, useful reflex for the forelimb is the withdrawal reflex. Again, you see flexion of all the joints. The cutaneous truncare paniculus reflex um, assesses um, the, the uh, lateral cutaneous nerve coming out at T2. And finally, we have the perineal reflex, which is assessing S1, S2.